well, let's use this design for a large-scale environmental project to further our discussion of blocks. What I'd like to focus on now is here's a drawing with a number of blocks in it. Let's zero in here and pick this block. So it's called tree-5m and it's come from a surveyor who's located that tree. They have their symbol for it. Here's a symbol for, in fact, a pinus species and it has the name pinet-74. So it's, it's basically a survey drawing. If I pick that block, notice this little extension from a grip that's been placed in the centre of the block. That indicates the base point for the particular symbol, and here it also indicates the base point. But notice this little handle that emanates from the base point of the symbol. In this case it's running vertically down, whereas if I come over here and click this one, the little handle is running to the right. You can do an awful lot of editing and manipulation of drawings using that little handle. Let's come across over here and let's take this group of symbols. Can you see these are several that have been taken from the GK Plus library? So I've just gone library and plants and standard and just scroll down through here to find a particular symbol. But if I click, notice the regularity of all of these symbols. They're all stacked up because I've placed this one and copied it down, copied it down, probably as I here have left polar on. What you can use the little symbol for is just to rotate. You don't need to cancel the command and we're just arbitrarily moving these symbols around, spinning them around based on that handle. We could even do that. Just makes the design look a little more organic. I might sort of want to move that down. So it takes the regularity uh, out of things. So that base point for a block and the handle that's on the low, linked to the base point is really important. So if, if, for the sake of argument, you've created a new symbol and you want to use it as, uh, as a block, very important to nominate the convenient base point. And you will have seen here that mostly that one's not quite in the centre and could do with some editing, but this one's definitely in the centre, as is that one. So if we wanted to make this a block, just select all the entities that are in it, right click and say I'm going to create a block, we'll give it a name TT. This is the important step, do pick a base point and you might even want to use O snap and snap to the centre of that circle and we'll convert it to a block. You can even delete it, that would sit on the shelf associated with this drawing and uh, we might take a look at that in a moment so, but we can say OK now here's the symbol it's called over here TTT and there's its base point which can be rotated and we can copy it very very easily now if you don't nominate a base point in the centre of the symbol it's likely to be way down here to the left or in some arbitrary position. So that little step is of crucial importance. I could explode it and I'll delete this one and I'll say let's make another one and we'll say create a block. I'll take one and I'll, instead of triple T it'll be TT. Now I will pick a base point here, but one of the options is to delete the block and we'll OK. The block disappears but it has been made. So if we go to the block option, you can see in here there's TT. We can 
bring it back into the drawing if we want. So some people like to create a whole series of blocks, um, delete them as they go, they then uh, secure in the knowledge that the blocks, newly made blocks, sit on the shelf. So I hope that develops our knowledge of blocks just a little more.